What's up, rock stars? Today I'm going to be painting Katsu by Cinco Cushion Five Sacrifices. Now, this was supposed to be an unboxing, however, my hard drive failed and I lost lots of footage. Uh, one of them was the unboxing. Uh, one of it was actually part of this video. I'll uh, talk about that when I got when I get to it. Um, it's it's nothing major uh, per se, and I'm I'm already kind of past that and recovering. And thanks to my awesome, wonderful patrons, I was able to quickly buy a much better and improved uh, hard drive that can really handle the storage, plus some backup software, so that uh, I will never have this issue again. But I do apologize for that. Um, I you know I obviously I talked about this miniature and all that, but you know what? There's nothing better than looking at it getting painted because that is really when you see all the little details. I don't know how many times I've looked at a miniature and looked at it and I've you know kind of d discussed it, and then I get to painting it. And then when you paint it, because you're spending so much time on it and so detailed, even I notice new things that I had never noticed before. But anyway, uh, this is her kind of completed. You can kind of see her built up. And I th first of all, I think they're really smart with the, uh, you know, I, I saw some people have some issue with uh, the coloration, I think, especially painted. I think she looks good. Um, but uh, she, she has a lot of red, a lot of green, and then some white. Uh, they were worried about kind of a candy cane look there. Uh, I didn't really get that. Uh, you could always go uh, more advanced than I do in the white. I just kind of do white. Um, but you could get some uh, off-white shading in there, right? If you wanted a reflection from the base, for instance, I think that would look freaking sweet. Uh, you'll see what I do with the base here. I guess you kind of already did on the thumbnail. So, uh, cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater there. But uh, anyway, uh, she paints up really, really well. So you can see here, I've already base coated in green. By the way, all the paints that I used are linked down below. Um, additionally, I'm using some new paints from Skill75. One of my patrons was kind enough to give me some uh, metal ones and uh, that they're really, really cool. They need two coats pretty much always. Uh, they're a little thin, um, but they go on pretty darn smooth. Uh, I only had one issue with them besides the fact that they need two coats. But uh, anyway, so now I'm just gonna base coat in white. By the way, her face is awesome because painting eyes suck and she doesn't have eyes and so she has a covering over her eyes. So all you have to do is her mouth and that's super easy. And it's like open so you can just put the black and then pink tongue and all that. It's, it's kind of fun. Um, they built her actually really smart too because she has those two other points of contact from her little like uh, like tentacle stabby stab things uh, that are going into the ground and so she's actually very secure on there. You can pick her up quite easily. Additionally, they had it to where the other two that are like really out there are connected to that little ball thing which is then connected to her, her head. Uh, and her hair so that again she's just all, all of it's really really secure and I was really happy about that uh, I'm just doing basic skin tone you know just basic stuff for her uh, her face and now I'm putting a wash on the white now I actually kind of freaked out a little bit here I figured I had ruined it. I mean look how ugly and hideous that is that's not necessarily what I was going for um, I was going to negative paint or just kind of paint in the recesses the shadow areas and keep the white However, there's a lot of that, and so I was like, ah, I don't want to spend that much time. So I covered her in it and just made her really look really dirty. Uh, however, because this is so light, and of course, you know, as long as you have a good white, I'm using the Vallejo white here that I tend to have good luck with. The coverage is actually pretty good, even watered down, and with that two or three coats, yes, two or three coats, I was able to, I think, turn this around a lot and make it look so, so much better. So I'm actually happy I did it, and again, you could have done this um another way too like i said if you're going to re reflect the base you'll notice that on the i had a blue or purple on the base you could have put a purple wash uh in the white and thin down your white with some purple wash instead of water or something like that and what that tends to do is it'll it'll water it down but also tint it so you can use washes i use it actually all the time i do that quite often where i'll, I'll use a wash to water down the uh the paint and so it it, it also in turn uh tints it uh, automatically for you, which is kind of cool. It's a good way to uh, tint a light color. It wouldn't work on a dark color very well. You know, you can't get a dark brown and tint it pink uh, with, a, with a pink wash. That's not going to happen. Uh, but for light colors, especially white, it works very, very well. So she has all these uh, kind of diamonds on her and this outline. She also has this uh, kind of metal zipper kind of uh, look to her uh, on the, the sides here. I guess, I don't know if that's how she gets in there or if it's just there for, for funsies, for fashion. Uh, I'm not sure what the fashion is there, but either way, she has those. 
Uh, and so putting that on there and then I'm also putting it kind of in the round spinny disc part here. Now I'm going to use a lot of different kind of metals. Again, I got quite a few. So thank you so much for that, by the way, that was, uh, as you can see, I, I, I used it almost right away. This was a perfect miniature for it. One of the things I actually like about her, especially with her, her hair being so big is between her and her hair, she's obviously natural, right? And so she has just normal colors, but she's surrounded by this metal, especially if you paint the base how I painted it. And so it's kind of this clash of like this uh, nature fused with machine uh, that I thought was pretty darn cool. I, I kind of liked that. Uh, so this is heavy metal from Skill 75. And again, it needed two coats uh, to get a really good coverage and not, so even on this light, um, uh, uh, prime and, and in fact actually if I had primed black uh, it would have been darker but it also probably would have looked okay with just one coat uh, painting with white you tend to need a little bit more pigment and then I'm just slapping some null null on there uh, this is where I noticed actually all the little dings do you see the little dings and like the uh, the wires or the cabling or whatever this is that it, it's used very very cool I, I really like how that breaks it up uh, I can only imagine how this would be if it was a solid kind of tube uh, I think this looks a lot better with those little creases. And as you can see, the normal oil seeps right into there. So you kind of see these segments or these chips in it that I just think look really, really cool. Um, I like the clamps as well. They actually kind of remind me of like hair clamps, which I think is kind of fitting. Um, but it, it kind of clamps the wires together and then they flay out at the end there. I think that's very neat. Uh, just overall, very cool design. Another thing this does, especially with kind of the, the a little bit darker silver around it, is it kind of frames her, right? So she's kind of in the middle and then around her, both on the bottom side and the top sides um, and above her. So like uh, kind of a all the way around her, except for the base, is she's uh, surrounded by this stuff. And it really helps kind of draw the focus actually to her amongst all of this, which I think is pretty cool. Now, here's a mistake I feel like I did. So I painted all that, the recesses first, figuring, okay, I'll just paint the recesses. I don't have to worry about getting it anywhere. And I'll paint the purple over it. Don't do that. If you're going to do that, first, don't drop the miniature either. Um, paint the purple first. Don't even care where you get it. And then put the blue in the recesses. You'll be fine. Uh, and it'll save you some touch up later. I did a lot of touch up off camera on this. Uh, dry brushing on some, uh, uh, this is speed silver, I believe. No, I don't think it is. Um, anyway, a, a, again, they're all of it's down below. I'm not looking at my notes right now. I'm just talking to you guys while we kind of watch this together almost. Um, but a lighter, a lighter silver, just kind of dry brushing that, uh, for reflection points based off of where general lighting might be slightly overhead and maybe at an angle somewhere. Um, I'm not doing any, uh, anything fancy like that. Uh, just, just kind of a, a general, uh, give it shape. Right. And that's, that's in, unless you're like really following how light works, which I don't understand how light works apparently. But if, if you are artistic enough to understand how basic things like lighting works, um, then you can do it accurately. For me, I just do a tiny, uh, yeah, give it a volume and shape uh, and differentiate it and kind of change it up a little bit. And I, I find that that tends to you know accentuate curves like these curves up and stuff like that, or the curve back there, as, as you can see, or maybe it being flayed out there. Um, and then from different angles, you just kind of see different parts of it. And I think that's kind of nice. Now, as you can see, I'm putting in an additional uh, layer here, just even brighter. Uh, I think it get to the point where it's white alchemist. So it, it can get pretty bright at the brightest points. And then I'm putting a very, very dark. Uh, uh, this is like black metal, I think, or something like that. It's a very dark Dark, dark silver uh, highlights up extremely well. You don't need to use a known oil because it won't really darken it anyway. Um, and again, it, it I think it uh, just complements these, uh, you know, but it's still in the silver realm. If you notice, I've used three or four silvers now, um, but they all look different and they all kind of, uh, you know, act differently, even in the lighting. Uh, like this dark one just doesn't reflect as much. Um, but it still has a little bit of a shine, but not like super reflective, which is nice. And again, it just generally kind of breaks it up. Additionally, because it's so dark and she's white, and then there's a kind of the bright silver, and then even the base is fairly bright, you, you, you do see them, uh, as almost like this kind of, um, you know, uh, it's not black, but it, all things considered here, it's one of the darkest colors here. And so you really notice it. And that's really the danger anyway, right? That's the weapons that she uses. And so seeing that really, uh, uh, you know, just draws the attention to that a little bit too, which is kind of nice. Uh, it makes them stand out, right? You want to you want to notice the weapon that they use. 
So this is pretty simple. This is just, you know, me coming back in with the normal silver that I've been using and uh, painting in this. I wanted to paint again. You want to paint the recesses as much as possible and then kind of paint outward. And so I had to paint the black before I painted the silver there. And now I'm finally changing it up, but it's it's uh, towards like the red that she has here. And so it's kind of like a coppery kind of look here. Uh, again, I forget which color uh, this one necessarily is, but um, it, it, it just, again, it breaks it up and it looks like there's like this scroll kind of design work, this kind of fancy, uh, um, color there. And so I figured, well, you know what, I'll, I'll do the band, the bands in that color. And it just makes it look a little, almost like a relic, uh, not just something industrial, if that makes sense. And then of course, I'm going to bring it to these. And I think that really helps these kind of uh, stand out as well because silver is kind of typically kind of almost like you hear like blue steel, right? So it's typically a cool color or associated with cool or has some blue or some purple in it. A lot of times if you leave silver, a silver paint on your wet palette and it gets too wet, you'll notice it'll separate and it'll have like this blue or purple like liquid. And that's the, the colored medium that's in there that's separating from the, the metallic bits that are also in there. And so combining that with the one that's more on the warm side, on the red side, uh, it's kind of nice. Now you'll notice I did skip some parts here. Do you see that green uh, metal? I didn't mean to skip it. It's just that's some of the, the footage I also lost. So again, thank you so much to my patrons. They really uh, saved me from a bind and, and made a, a lot of this possible. So a uh, huge shout out to them. It's, it's really, really thanks to them that this video even exists. So I'm glad to bring it to you, even though it's maybe not exactly what you wanted to see. Um, but you know what? I enjoyed painting her anyway. I was going to paint her no matter what. And, uh, and so I was actually already part way through it, which is why I had the film on my computer when the, when the hard drive failed. Um, the black looked terrible to me until I added this. And I'm really glad that they had this even in the art. Um, it makes it look kind of like a power glove from Nintendo. If you remember what that is, uh, which is awesome, uh, <laughs> in its, in its own sense. But, uh, uh, that really helped kind of tie in that, that black part because otherwise it looked really stark and just kind of dirty. These gems I had thought for a while and I have almost this like, it's almost like a rosé, uh, very light red metallic, uh, again from the Skill 75 set, that just made them look kind of like a slightly colored pearls, which I, I really liked. I actually kept it on one coat. So there's probably a little bit of that white primer there, which I think just helps it look a little bit more pearly anyway. So I'm happy with that. And then I bring it around here kind of on the bottom and on the side. So now you have several different colors there. It really makes that stand out from the kind of nasty tentacle pincer uh, attack weapon stuff that she has um, and makes that kind of ball connector joint just look interesting. This took forever. This base, my goodness, oh my gosh. Uh, again, it would have been so much easier, so much easier just to paint the whole thing, a big old brush to get that purple out, just paint the whole freaking thing purple and then just go in and, and even if you had to do two coats of the blue because you're doing it over the purple instead of kind of a white uh, gray primer and so, uh, you know, obviously it, it'll paint easier on the light color than the dark color, it still would have been quicker. Um, because what I ended up having to do is touch up the blue and then touch up the purple and it, it was a whole song and dance. And I, it, even then, I don't think I ever quite got perfect. This is the one part, by the way, that I, I struggled with the, um, not just the coverage, but the metal itself. So when I'm painting it with this big brush, getting it smooth on this flat surface was actually kind of hard. It, and no matter what I tended to do, it would show brush strokes. Uh, so I kind of almost had to purposely put the brush strokes to kind of hide it as much as I could. I think it ends up fine. Um, I thought about actually adding a little bit of a shadow to it because it's underneath her. Um, but I, I didn't want it to necessarily look like just this ring in the middle is, uh, is shadowed. I think that'd be a little silly. So I ended up just dealing with it and trying and trying. And I think it ended up just fine. Now this highlight's going to look extreme and it is, uh, however, uh, if, if you don't highlight it enough, um, then you're not going to see it from far away and you're not going to see it in dimmer lighting. In fact, one thing I would suggest, and I want to talk about this with the hair too, when you're painting, especially if you're painting like me, where you have these kind of bright lights on it and this kind of, you know, special, you know, it's just the right amount of Kelvin. And so all this kind of stuff to like really see your mini, that's great when painting. But when you wanted to actually figure out if you've done enough in the highlight, turn those off and look under it and in, like in your game room, if you're not painting in your game room, like most game rooms I know, or most where people, uh, the play their games it's not very well lit it's not like this anyway they don't have spotlights on it and you know it's not the right kelvin temperature of the light and all that kind of stuff so um and then stand 
you know, up to three feet away and see if you can still see it. So like right now, she's actually on my shelf behind me. And I I, I can see these highlights on her hair, uh, but not nearly as well as I'd like. I'd like even from this distance to be able to see those curves and that volume of her hair. And I don't really get that. Like I'm looking at it right now, actually, and it just... Uh, I actually wish I'd gone uh, one level above. I would have just added a tiny bit more. And I don't know if it's necessarily adding more white. Uh, I didn't want it to be a super bright green. I thought that'd be kind of cartoony. So I actually added white to the green instead of like a yellow, which would have been great to do kind of a brighter green, um, almost like a jungle green kind of thing. Um, but I wanted it a little bit muted uh, and a slightly more realistic in color, you know, not quite maybe so Super Saiyan green anime kind of style going on. So um, I chose to do that but uh, adding yellow in there would have brightened it up and really made it pop adding even more white I think would have especially if if all you're doing is like the absolute light reflection and maybe just adding that just getting like uh, uh, it's almost white but it's like a, a greenish white and then like just doing that little bit would have I think done more so right here first of all when it's wet it's reflecting light and so when you have these lights on it and it's wet you just laid it down it looks brighter and then as it dries it looks darker and then of course again it's in this great lighting so if you're looking at it this close and in that lighting, yeah, I think it looks great. Personally, I like it. Um, but farther away and all that, it does look a little bit dimmer. Uh, and it just looks a little bit less impressive. And so uh, just a tip uh, that I need to start following myself. So I did add another layer. So here's another one. I added a little bit more white. Um, so the extra white plus the second layer, um, because again, this is all watered down quite a lot, will help kind of, again, pop that up a little bit. And I actually wish, again, I had done a little bit more. So... Uh, but do it to taste. You know, I think a lot of people, if you are making a, a miniature that you just want to put on display on like a, a stand that has its own lighting and stuff like that, then by all means do that. Um, but I actually, um, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to uh, send her out and uh, to one of my patrons, uh, maybe as this thank you, I think that'd be kind of cool. Um, or wait until I get single cushion and either paint a second one and then give one of them out. Or maybe just send out the miniature and keep the painted one and while I already have it painted. Anyway, here she is in great lighting in my kind of a lighting situation and the turntable where you can see her. Um, so you can kind of see the whole miniature front, back, uh, all of it. I hope you enjoyed that. It's kind of a, actually a shorter painting video. So I hope you appreciate that. I worked hard to edit that sucker down. Um, and hopefully maybe I, I, uh, I taught you something or you learned something. Uh, if you have any advice or anything, I would obviously love to learn as well. So feel free to share in the comments below. And again, thank you so much to my patrons. Seriously, this video would not exist and you would not be if watched it if it wasn't for them. I would not have been able to recover this. I wouldn't have been able to get the, uh, the uh, hard drive to kind of put this back on and then edit it. And actually even my editing software was on that hard drive. So I had to re-get that. And it was a whole two day ordeal that I had to deal with, but, um, it would have been way, way worse without them. So thank you so much for that. I, I cannot say that enough. And this miniature, I mean, wow, it is so freaking unique. I have nothing else like it. She stand like, she's on a shelf with a whole bunch of others. You'll see it in my videos where you see the background and maybe I'll point her out later, but, um, it, it, seriously, she just, she's unique and she stands out and she's awesome. And she's like the most techno version of the single cushion. Looks like all the other ones are actually fairly, uh, almost more standard, uh, more fantasy feudal based, but wow, this definitely shows uh, the crazy world that it takes place in. So I'm excited to learn more. Obviously, when I get more information, when I get my hands on Cinco Cushion, I will let you guys know and show that to you. So if you're looking forward to that and you haven't subscribed, be sure to subscribe. That's super helpful to the channel and I greatly appreciate it. And with that, that's all I had to say. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you have a great rest of your day. I'll talk to you again very, very soon. Thank you.